He says he's tired of stories. He says he longs for some little language such as lovers use, broken words like the shuffling of feet upon the pavement. You want a cup of coffee? Should we walk or take a bus? I don't like shopping. You don't like standing still. One black and one with milk. And a powdered donut, please. A noise, a commotion, a clash of devices, of emblems, of mottoes, of epistles, of sonnets, of epigrams, of books, of chattering scribbles, of terminal sweats, of lives consumed, of cries that deafen the stars, laments that make hell's caverns reverberate. Aches that strike the living dumb, sights that exhaust the pity of the gods. For those eyes, for those cheeks, for that bosom, for that white, for that crimson, for that tongue, for that tooth, for that lip, for that mantle. That glove, that slipper, that high heel, that avarice, that giggle, that scorn, that empty window, that eclipse of the sun, that hammer, that disgust, that stench, that sepulchre, that cesspit, that carrion, that malaria, that uttermost insult and lapse of nature, that with the surface, a shadow, a phantasm. A dream, an enchantment of Circe, plied in the service of reproduction, should deceive in the matter of beauty, which simultaneously comes and goes, issues and dies, flowers and rocks, and is somewhat beautiful on the outside, but truly and fixedly. Contains within a shipyard, a workshop, a custom house, a marketplace of every foulness, toxin, and poison that our stepmother, nature, has managed to produce. And once the sea she requires has been paid out, she often repays it with a morass, a remorse. A sadness, a placidity, a headache, a lassitude. This and that distemper that are known to all the world. So that every place aches bitterly where it itched so sweetly before.